Hey guys, welcome back to a new video in which I'm going to show you two different things that have to do with user's location. And the first thing, I'll show you how to track your user's location in the background using a foreground service. So this can be used for a running app or just things like Uber or so. So you need to track your user's location persistently in the background even if the app is not active. And then the second thing, how to get the user's location one time. So let's say you have social networking app in which a user can share their location with their friends. So they just want to get the location and then send it there. So that's what I want to do in this video. And let's go to Android Studio and see the app. Let's open it. We immediately request location tracker original permission, which is needed for this. Let's accept that. We need a notification for our foreground service. And let's accept that. Okay, here we get three different buttons. Want to get the location one time. So let's click on that. And here it is. Here is my location. Of course, it's not the entire location. I've just taken the last four numbers from it. And then when we click on this one, we will start tracking the locations in the background. So we'll get an update every second. The first time it takes some time to show the notification. But let's wait for it until that notification is shown. Okay, here it is. And this is actually updated every second. So let's say while I move, this also changes. So yeah, and when I click on this stop, it just stops. Of course, as I said, this tracks this in the background. Now I start to track in and I quit the app. The tracking will be continued and that's what you want. But once I stop it, I stop it and the notification is gone. So that's what we are going to build. And I have prepared some things. So let's see what I have in my project. To get started, we have this library, which is, let's go to version catalog, which is this services location, which is needed to get used location with the version. So you can just add these. I will leave this code in the description. You can copy them from there. And yeah, add the implementation right here. And that's it. You just click sign. You'll be able to tr start track a location. The other things I've prepared is we need a notification for our foreground service. So I already created a foreground service here. Why? Because Creating an entire foreground service will take some time and the video will be too long. And if you want to understand foreground services in details, I will leave you a video in which I did explain those with the notification as well. So you can watch that. But I will of course explain what this does. Okay, for a foreground service, we need a notification. And for a notification, we need the channel. And here I created the channel. So what is a channel? Let's just see that real quick. Let's open any app like messaging, for example. And then, as you can see here, we have channels. So incoming message is a channel, background task, all of these are channels. So you can actually enable a channel or disable it. And then when you open it, you get some description about this channel and so. So a channel describes a notification or sometimes a group of notifications because we can have more than one notification in one channel. So yeah, that's what a channel means. Here's our channel, let's create some space down here. So we actually need to create them after SDK all. And we use this notification manager create. So this is the channel, this is the ID, we will see the ID. And then, yeah, we just create notification using notification manager. And then let's check our location tracker service, which is our foreground service, in which we have that ID, as you can see, location channel, which is the same as we used right here. It's the same one. Now what do we have inside our foreground service? Of course, we extend service within the scope in which we are going to be tracking that because in the only story of our foreground service, we want to cancel that. So the tracking will also be canceled. Otherwise, it won't be canceled because it updates every second. Even if I cancel my foreground service, the notification will still be there and the updates will still be happening. And here we have the on start command in which we send an action to which is either start or stop. So when we send an action with our intent that is start, we do start. And if we send stop, we stop. So what is in start? We just have a notification measure that we don't use yet. We created a simple notification. It has an icon and the title says location tracker and a style. And then we just start our service with this notification, but we don't do anything special. We don't even have any content or anything. And then when we stop, we just stop our foreground service, passing this one that says, yes, remove the notification and then stop self. And uh, yeah, that's all we have. So our notification service is really empty. There's nothing in there. And then in my activity or in my screen, I did prepare the screen. As you saw it, here it is a column with our location text state because let's check the app. That's actually a state. So this text in here, that's a state. 
and uh, we don't do anything with it yet we just assign that as our text text and then a spacer a button to get the location we don't do anything yet in here another spacer and then two buttons want to start tracking and want to stop tracking okay and here we need some permissions so let's check our manifest and see what we need for this project we need this one which is access cross location which is a must to track or just get used location and then access find location which gives you actually a precise or an exact location but as the documentation says this one only use it if you actually need precise location otherwise don't in our case we can uh, need that so we want to also use it and then the foreground service permission foreground service type which is location post notification because we need to show notification this is needed only in under with stk 23 yeah 23 and above and then we did adjust to our app as you can see and then down here i just also adjusted my foreground service which is my location tracker service the type is location and it's just the service that you've seen nothing is special that's say that's all i prepared but i don't really have anything that has to do with location yet for that i create a class called location manager of course in a real app you would want to have an abstraction and implementation for this so that in testing you wouldn't actually get the real location or source you just have some testing stuff going on in there but in my case i don't have any architecture in here so i'm just going to do it like this so yeah i'm going to pass the context because we need that if you're using Dogger Hill, then this could be some sort of a repository so you inject the application to it in my case i'm going to use context that's what i need and it's created some space in here so we could see later we would need actually three different functions but two are the most important ones to us so fun it gets location and as the name says it just gets the location with no tracking and then the second function is fun track location this one actually tracks location and it gives me updates every second so let's actually start with the first one to track location or get it we need a fused location client provider maybe that's what it's called so private val fused location provider client yeah that's what it's called but let's just call it fused location client is equal to location services dot get location provider client passed in the context and this is what we are going to use to get location simply now to get location once we're going to get it using our fused location client dot last location dot add on success listeners so that's it that's really all you need to do here you get location like this and you do have location we have an error because it doesn't recognize that we have a permission so i'm just going to annotate this one with this annotation actually the entire class actually i don't know if i told you this in my activity i did request these permissions these three actually the ones that we saw the cross location find location and post notification so i did request that and this is not the proper way of requesting permissions i do have a video on how to just get users permissions in the proper way i will leave its video in the description as well so now we get the location right here now we want to return this location but we can't really just say here this function returns location because i will return the location here before i even get it from this on success listeners so what you do in here is we're going to use a lambda instead so let's do this let's call it on success function or lambda function it either takes a location itself and then i deal with it in my screen but in this case i'm going to return the latitude and longitude and in the other one here i'm actually going to return the entire location so we'll see both of those so in here what i need is latitude of type string and then you just go to a new line longitude of type string as well okay so maybe i have an extra bracket or i'm missing one actually and then this returns unit okay so right here all i'm going to do is get in those two so val latitude is going to be location dot latitude dot to string and there i have it but this is my entire location so let me just remove this or close that and then i'm going to write take last four so let's show you the last four numbers on it and this is the longitude and then of course on success passing my latitude and longitude so yeah 
now I do have the notification by just using this lambda function in my screen. And that's exactly what we are going to do. Let's go to our activity or our screen, you could say. So let's go down here and then I need to initialize or create, get an instance of my notification manager or I'm sorry, a location manager, private aval location manager by lazy. This is going to be a location manager passing the application context. Why using by lazy? Because at this point, this application context won't be available yet except in the on create. So by lazy, make sure that this instance doesn't get initialized until we do have application context. Okay. In the button click right here, it's as simple as using my location manager dot get location. And then on my Lambda, let me just do it like this. I get both of those. Let me just copy the names. So here they are. And then my location text, which is, of course, this state is going to be, let's say, location and then latitude slash longitude. And to make sure that it's not the full thing, I'm going to put two dots before each one. Now, let me run the app. So let's close this one and wait. The app is launching. We do ask for the permission. Let's accept that accept that and just click on the button and hopefully we do get a location as you can see here this is so getting location once is working we can share this with our friend if we have an app in which we can share location we can of course get this entire location and then deal with it as we want in our view model or whatever so you can do whatever you want with it now that's how to get a location once but how do we actually track a location in a running app for example you want to track the location in the background. So here we have a service. So let's get started with the start function. And the first thing I will actually need is my location manager again. So var location manager is going to be location manager passing the application context because we do have that in a service since that comes from the Android framework. And then after starting my foreground service, I want to get lot oh, I want to track the location rather say, but of course, I don't track it yet. So how do we actually track it right here? Since we want to get updates every second, then what's better than using a flow? So we're going to return a flow of type location. As I said, this time we're going to use location instead of just these two strings. And we need a callback. So it's like a callback we use to get those updates. For that, I'm going to create an entire function for it, but it's going to be a private one. Fun location callback. It has a lambda that is called on result that gives me a location because this is where actually I get that location I want. And that returns unit. Okay. This of course needs to return a location callback. Then I'm going to write return object location callback. Here I need to override the on location result function in which I get a result. So this can be called result and it's pass that to the super. Then I can use my result dot locations. Let me just bring this to a new line dot because this is a list. Of course, we get locations and here we will get in. What is that? Last location. So one location here we get a list of locations and we only want the last. So last, but that can be no so last or no. So if there is no last or if list is empty or whatever, we get null dot let so make sure that it's actually not null to use it and then we can use our own result to pass the location that we get right here so that is actually a location on result passing my location and that's it i do have my callback that gives me a location now i do get location but i don't actually get updates every second or every 30 seconds whatever i want for that let's return I flow. We won't actually use the flow exactly, and we'll see why. We'll change it later, but I want you to see why exactly. So I first need this location callback. So let me just create an instance for it. Well, location callback is going to be location callback. And here I need to emit uh, the location. So here I get, of course, location, and I need to emit it. And the problem is I can't use emit. I need to have some cruising scope or so. And also after I finish 
I need to actually remove location updates from my, what is that, fused location client. And it will actually do that later, but let's just continue like this. We can't actually use a met, we need a quality scope, so we can do something like quality scope dispatchers.io since that's an IO operation, but let's not do that yet. Here we need a request that gives us those updates every uh, second or in an, a given interval. So var request is going to be location request dot builder where we need to pass the interval now. So let's say every second dot build. Let's bring this to a new line. Here we get an error. It says requires API level 31, but I don't think we need that. So let's just check if we actually imported the wrong one. Maybe yes, we imported the wrong one. We don't need API level 31 or so. It's this one. As you can see now, we, we have no error. Now we can use our fused location client to request those updates. So request location updates. We want to pass our request and then our callback and then looper dot get main looper. But when my flow finishes or when it's no longer being observed or collected, I need to actually call the fused location client dot remove location updates passing my location callback. But the problem is there is no function that tells me this flow is finished. Of course, here I can get dot on completion. And if I put it inside here, I don't get access to this location callback, which is a problem, which is this one I have in here. So to solve this problem, you just delete that, or we still want this line. But we are going to return a callback flow. And here we can send now instead of emit and here we can just have await close and we can put this inside as you can see now when this flow is no longer being collected this will be called when it finishes now to send we need a quoting scope so we can just simply launch it like this which is something we don't actually get with a normal flow so we need to, in a normal flow create quoting scope with dispatcher.io or so but here we just get it using launch like this and we can send our location. And that's it. Now we just need to observe or collect this flow. And that's exactly what we are going to do right here in our server. We already have this scope, which is using supervisor job plus dispatchers.io for the context. So we're going to use that scope. We could call it location scope or whatever to launch. And then we actually observe that when on the only store my service, I consider that. So I make sure that all resources are released so now i'm going to use my location manager dot track location this time dot collect here i get location as you can see so let's just name it a location and then again i get that latitude and longitude so let me just copy them from here and here i have them from my location and i want to update my notification now with these that i get from my notification or location manager so notification manager which is what i have in here if you don't understand what this notification manager is and stuff i do have a video ex where i explain this in details so we're just now going to use it to update our notification so we're going to write a dot notify every notification has an id and in this case i started my foreground service with a notification id one i need to update it with one because otherwise it might just create a notification or so so to update it i need to specify the id which is one Okay, then I'm going to use my notification, the one that I created right here, because now I don't have any text on it. Dot set content text, and the text is going to be again location, just like in my screen. Is let's say two dots, and then my latitude slash two dots longitude. Okay, and then dot build because we don't actually build that one in here so we need to build it right here because if we just want to call it like this this one needs a notification and here actually i can just get a notification with this set content i need to get it with dot build and that's why i don't build in here so i build every time i update my notification and that's it actually so we did explain all of those things that we have in here but we don't actually use that service yes in yet i mean in my screen so to launch a service on the start tracking we'll need an intent that takes application context or activity or whatever and then we need to say where we are going to send this intent to so our location tracker service that will come in class to java 
and then dot also not action but also because now we need to give it action which is my location tracker service dot action dot start so that's the start action dot name because it needs a string and that's exactly what I also get right here what is the action as you can see action dot start dot name because I need the string value and then I just want to start my service with the action that I already gave to this intent to stop it let's copy this go down to the stop function let's create some space down here paste that and now the action is stop and that's it and don't be confused that I start it instead of stopping it I start it and this on start command will get triggered and it will realize that the action is stop and it will actually stop it stop foreground removing the notification as well and then stopping it because if I just stop it directly right here I won't be able I won't be able to release any resources or remove any notifications so I give the responsibility of stopping to the service itself so I say let's run the app and see if we actually do track the location in the background and if we are going to get any crashes or, or something like so so let's start tracking the first time it may take some time but I will also check the look at making sure that I have no crashes and it's actually working I have no crashes it is actually tracking my location every second as you can see and uh, I quit the app this tracking will still work of course if I click on the notification nothing will happen because it didn't uh, configure that or so and I can stop tracking maybe this is the old app I don't know I actually have to answer so this is it I can stop tracking and yes it did stop tracking I can start tracking it's tracking I can stop tracking it's it did stop tracking so the app works just fine I do start tracking I do get a notification once if I want to share it with someone and everything is working fine and now we came to the end of this video in which we learned how to track user location persistently in the background and just get the location once to share it or do whatever we want with it so if you find what i'm doing helpful support me by subscribing leaving a like and sharing this video with your friends see you in the next video and bye